Okay, number 20, and what would be the last, is the public ministry or soul winning lessons. And to conclude, we're going to look at what happens at salvation. 1 John 1 9. We properly introduce the gospel to somebody. We properly have dealt with the person. We're not going to just make them say a prayer to get saved. So we can notch our belt. We're going to have respect. We're going to do it the biblical way. And if there's no salvation evident, we're going to leave them with prayer. And hopefully some gospel tracks. But we're not going to falsify salvation so we can say, look how good we are. You need to go back to the other 19 videos and audio. If we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, upon confession and belief, Romans 10, 9 and 10, with the heart, with the mouth, God is faithful and just to forgive forgiveness of sins. And we're looking at that first time the person has ever come to God for salvation. They are asking God to save their soul. They are bringing to God that they are a sinner in their sin. Like I said, what I do is, somebody at that point, when I get to the point where it's dealing with their sins, I say, listen, in quietness, you confess what sins you can remember right now to God. I don't need to hear them. God does. And God is faithful and just to forgive us the sins and to provide cleansing. No man, no human, no priest, no rabbi, no preacher can take away forgiveness and cleansing of our sins. It's impossible. They are sinners. A sinner cannot relieve a sinner of sin. It has to be done by God through Jesus Christ alone. And then point out this, boy, this verse to someone who has received Christ. Say, listen, after you're saved, you're still a sinner. You're still going to sin. And this verse here, if you confess your sins after you're saved, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us. So remarkable, Luke 15, remarkable that we have the God. The Savior, Jesus Christ, who not only forgives us of our sins, but cleanses our sins. And then when we say, when Satan comes up and he will, what about those sins before you were saved? God don't remember them. God has cleansed me. God has forgiven me. There's no reason to bring them up. If God has forgiven and God has cleansed me, there's no need for them. They're gone. So now, Luke 15, 7. Our sins have been washed at salvation. We are cleansed. Luke 15, 7. I say unto you that likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that has just repented, that repenteth, 1 John 1, 9, more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. So, when a man comes to Jesus Christ as a sinner, and he has repented, there are, is joy in heaven and rejoicing in heaven by the angels. I like to point that out to people I have witnessed to and have re asked Christ to save their soul. I have turned to this pastor and said, you know what just happened now in heaven? Someone may have threw a touchdown. Someone may have made a ball in a basket. Someone may have hit a home run. Someone may have finished the final lap or the, whatever it is. The angels, 
What's that, Lord? What are you doing? You're writing a new name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Jesus Christ has saved his own soul. And there's rejoicing. There's pleasure. Luke 15, 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Again, repentance. Repentance is not just, oh, I'm sorry, but go back and do it. Oh, oh, you know, you caught me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's not repentance. Repentance is, I'm sorry, and I'm going to try. If not, I'm going to stop that and knock it off. If I don't quit, because we're still sinners, I'm going to battle it. I'm going to confess it. I'm going to seek God's help. I'm going to put my own help into knocking it off. Stop it. Saying no to sin. And there's joy in the angels of heaven. When a man gets right. That's what the angels rejoice over. They don't rejoice over a ball. They don't rejoice over a race. They enjoy rejoice over a man that has brought his sins to God. And they're watched. Luke 10, 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. And had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, un, said, said unto the father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servant, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and then found is found. And they began to be married. Well, isn't it interesting? And there is no end to the merrymaking in that chapter. Nothing. It is the father saying, Here he comes. It's the son saying, I have sinned against God. I am sorry. I, listen. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your servants. And the father's like, I've heard the repentance. I've heard that he's sorry. He's truly sorry. I don't want to hear it no more. I want to rejoice. I want to be merry making. Luke 10, 20. This is all happens after a man has left the kingdom of Satan, the fatherhood of Satan, has come to the fatherhood and the family of God the Father through Jesus Christ, through the blood atonement, through the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scripture, and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to scriptures, when a man believes on that from his heart, with his mouth confession, there is just great merrymaking, there is just great rejoicing over that. And in Luke 10, 20, notwithstanding this, rejoice not, that they could serpents, and uh, the scorpions, and healing and, and all the signs and wonders notwithstanding this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven oh he threw a ball oh, 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 oh. oh he he made 500 left hand turns whoopie do cares oh he had the greatest performance ever whoopie do Oh, he got three trophies. Whoopie do. He got his name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Glory to God in the highest. Jesus Christ is praised. Jesus Christ, the work on the cross, has not failed. There's a new name written down in glory in his mind. Been in a couple churches where somebody gets saved and they will sing that hymn. A new name written down in glory. God glories in the finished work of Jesus Christ upon a sinner that has repented and got right. That's the glory of God. Too many Christians put their glory in the wrong junk. 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 The blood of Jesus Christ ain't junk. It's power. It's worthy to be praised. It is worthy to be rejoiced. It puts a man's name in the Lamb's book of life forever and ever. Let's look at that. Romans thir I mean Revelation 13.8. Revelation 13.8.
Now, there is no rejoicing. I'm going to say if we go to 13.8, there is no rejoicing when someone just says a prayer and they're not truly saved. There is no rejoicing when you lead someone down a false, deceptive way of salvation. That's not true salvation. There's no rejoicing. And you'll be facing the judgment. 13.8 Revelation. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. In the book of life of the Lamb, capital L, Jesus Christ. Slain from the foundation of the world. That's the Antichrist. Your, and the church is gone. But let me tell you, the people who are in the tribulation, the church is gone. For those who have in the tribulation period, have gotten their names, are able to put their names in the Lamb's book of life, will not follow the Antichrist. The worship of Satan and the mark of the beast. There is no Jesus. It is God. And how can I say? It? it is not God, but Satan. That land's book of life is life. It is reservations into heaven. Either you got Satan or you got the land's book of life. Revelation 21, 27. You know, if you're going on a trip somewhere, Revelation 21, 27, and you're going to spend time at a hotel or motel, you call up, you make reservations, say, hey, I need a room, blah, 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 blah. I want this, blah, 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 blah. Well, before we die, in order to get to heaven, we got to make the reservation. And the reservations are made at Calvary. You walk up to Calvary, you see Jesus suffering and dying on that cross, bleeding God's blood, Acts 20, 28. And you say, Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent of my sins. I am going to turn this way, this day forth. I am going to follow and believe on you. I want to go to heaven. And at that moment, your name goes in a book. The Lamb's Book of Life. And as you would go to that hotel or that motel where you are, they would open up the book. Today they go online, go to the computer. But they would open up that book and they would look for your name. Yep, you got reservation. And when we go to heaven, that, that book will be open. And if your name is there by the blood of Jesus Christ, you go into heaven. If your name is not there, you go to hell. Plain and simple. Your name in there by the finished work and the merits of Jesus Christ alone will get you to heaven. I would go so far as to say, and I, this is not scriptural, but I would go so far as, name, far as to say that your name is written with the blood of Jesus Christ. But I can't prove that. But it is the blood of Jesus Christ. Which is the blood of God. Revelation 21, 27. There shall in no wise enter into it anything that's defiled. Neither whatsoever work is abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. If their name is not in that book, they will not be in heaven. They'll be in hell forever. If they have not ever confessed with their mouth, if they have not ever believed with their heart, they will not be because their name will not be in the Lamb's book of life. It's that simple. Oh, I think they're going to be there. If they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, they had put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, rest assured. Their name is in that Lamb's Book of Life. They're going to heaven. Philippians 4.3 Tell that person, when they have received Christ, and it will probably happen, it's happened to me, Philippians 4.3 Tell them how the angels rejoice, Luke 15. Tell them how the Father rejoices, Luke 15. Tell them to rejoice that their name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, Luke chapter 10. Tell them, Revelation 21, only those who are in the Lamb's Book of Life will go to heaven. Tell them. 
explain to him. Philippians 4 3. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, and Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. There are Christian names in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are not a Christian if your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life. You may say you're a Christian, but if your name does not appear, you're not a Christian. And that name goes in that book by your faith and your belief from your heart and from your mouth of confession. To Jesus Christ who suffered on that cross according to scriptures. And was buried. You say you keep saying it. Because that's the means of salvation. The gospel was buried. And arose again the third day according to scriptures. If you don't have a Jesus that was resurrected. You do not have a salvation. If you do not have a Jesus Christ that suffered and died on that cross. You do not have salvation. If you do not have a Jesus that did not do it scripturally. You do not have salvation. You do not have your name in the Lamb's book of life. Do not you dare ever, ever to say, say this prayer and you'll be saved. Their name will not be in the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation 3, 5. Kind of closing this off with warning. Don't you dare just get them into heaven so you can say, oh, this person got saved. Like I said before earlier. There's no means of salvation. There is no sorrow. There is no means of repentance by that person. Walk away. Walking away rather to be damned than walking away being damned think they're saved. Because I have dealt with people. Oh, I'm saved. Your testimony don't prove it. I said this prayer. I've been in the water. I've been to a church. I've been to a pastor. I've been to a priest. I've done this. I've done that. Yeah, but that's not the salvation. I don't tell me. My church, my pastor, my rabbi, my priest, this person. And sorry. Revelation 3 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Once your name is put in that book, it is forever in that book. Oh, can I lose my salvation? You can't be erased out of that book. Once that name is written out, I'll never depart. I'll never leave thee or depart from me. No man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Once you get that name in the Lamb's Book of Life, you are going to heaven by Jesus Christ and by the finished work of Jesus Christ, by the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it will never, ever be erased. Ever. Ever. Revelation 20, verse 15. God keeps good records. Ever read the book of Numbers? Ever read First Chronicles? How dare you think that God don't keep records? You know, there are names in the Bible. Who cares? I don't care about that guy. There are places in the Bible. I'm ah, never going to be there. Who cares? There are numbers of things that happen in the Bible. I mean, numbers. You know, 5, 10, 20, 1,000. Yeah, who cares? God cares. 20 verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the, land, written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. It's that simple. If your name is not in that book, the Lamb's Book of Life, the Book of Life, you will be forever cast off in the lake of fire that burneth forever and ever. How do you get in that Lamb's Book of Life today? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in the church age. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. You got to tell them now. What, what did they do? What happened? Don't leave. And, and for, please, if someone gets saved and you've led them to the Lord, train them up in the Lord. Take them on. Bible study them. Help them. Teach them. Help them. To, they've been newborn babes. They've been newborn. They're new. Uh, 
I'm getting all tongue tied right here. Forgive me. You got to get them all back on the milk. You got to get them through how to walk, how to talk, how to. They need help. Don't leave them by the wayside. 1 Corinthians 6 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, or adulterers, or effeminate, or abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. You got that? You are washed. You are clean. If you had truly repented of your sins and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are washed. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. It's not by your church. It's not by your merits. It's not what you've done. It's what the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God. See the Trinity there? by what they have done for you. No other way but Jesus. And so what if I do steal? What if I do get drunk? What if I do have covetousness? First John 1 9 If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If you tell a lie, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sin. And then the repentance part. you got to make it up. You just can't say, oh, I'm sorry for lying. you got to go and get that lie right. You've stolen something. Oh, Lord God, I am sorry for stealing that. you got to go and get it right. That's repentance. Now, last part. 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 1 7. Jesus Christ and the saved sinner. Jesus Christ and the saved sinner. Here we go. I'm saved. I've sinned. After I'm saved. You gotta get this across. 1 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, Jesus, and have fellowship one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from all sin. All sin. You gotta walk in the light. You gotta do what's right. And you're only gonna know by what's right by reading and studying the Bible. And your first few years as a newborn babe in Christ, you're not gonna get it right. You're not gonna get the Bible right. Verse 8, and if we say that we have no sin, I met a guy like that. Oh, I, I never sinned. You're a liar. You just sinned by lying. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So don't think, okay, now that I'm, I'm saved, I'm a Christian. I have been bought by Jesus Christ. I'm never going to sin. Oh, yes, you are. I don't know how, how soon after you get off your knees or the chair, wherever you are, wherever you receive Christ as your Savior, you will come to a time that you will sin. And there are people out there in religion. Well, now that I'm in this religion, I never swear. I, I never sin. I don't swear. I don't lie. I don't. You're lying. Christians are sinners. We do not become perfected unto death or the rapture. We become more and more aware of more sins by reading the Bible, by prayers, and by Bible preaching. King James. If we confess our sins, and that goes for after salvation too, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is a sin that God will never forgive. Wrong. What are you going to do with that verse? 
This guy committed this heinous crime and he ought never to be forgiven. If he truly confesses his sins, he confesses to a God that is going to forgive and cleanse him of his sin. How dare you say that God will never cleanse that sin? You are making God and the word of God a lie. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him, God, a liar, and his word's not in us. Imagine going around in religion, in a religion, or saved. I never sin. I don't ever sin. The passages we're looking at right now show we are sinners. And when we go around in the name of religion, or in the name of true Christianity, and we profess that, you know, we're perfect and all that, your co-workers are going to look at you and say, well, your God's a liar because <laughs> you stole time from work last week. You stole pencils. You stole paper clips. You are lying to get your job done. You're not faithful. <laughs> You're foolish. And foolishness is a sin. I mean, we, we could do a whole study and just start naming off sins that people do that they don't even know. Oh, I wish that boss would leave. I'm tired of that boss. I'm getting sick and tired. I'm going to do something about that boss. And the Bible says you're supposed to respect the rulers. How's that? Oh, this president, he's so rotten. And this woman, she's so terrible. You're supposed to respect your rulers. So shut up. You're sinning. Chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. Okay? Don't sin. Don't do it. Whatever you do that's a sin is different from what I do is a sin. Don't do it. How's that? Say no to sin. Teach this new convert this lesson. And learn this lesson aged in Christ. Sin not. Ready? That's not the end of the verse. King James. I don't know what a modern Bible would say. And if any man sin. Uh-uh. So the Bible commandment is do not sin. Loophole. <laughs> and if any man sin. Saved or lost. We have an advocate, one who pleads, one who steps in with the Father, God, Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is without sin. Okay. I, I lie. All right. Lions of sin. We all lie. I didn't mean to lie, but I did it. And I had confessed that sin. To God through Jesus Christ. Satan comes up to God and says, Hey, you see that Christian there? Yeah. Did you just hear that whopper he just told? Son? Father? He's ours. He's our son. It's under the blood on Calvary's cross. It's been confessed. God turns to Satan and says, I don't know what you're talking about. But he lied. He confessed his sins, and I am faithful and just to forgive him the sins. I don't see no lies. Through the blood atonement, through the finished work, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, my son down there, I don't see no lies. It's been confessed. All right? Let's try another one. I've stolen something. Satan goes up to God and says, God, you see that Christian? He stole something. Look at, look at that. He covered it and he stole. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not cover. How's that? Son. Father, he's our son. He is washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. But that sin of coveting and theft, he's not confessed it. He has not put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. 
God would have to turn over to Satan and say, well, he's a sinner. And we're not going to get into the issue, but yeah, he's a sinner. And any sin that we do not confess and use Jesus Christ as the advocate. Let's try a third one. All right. I have thought in my head, I wanted to kill somebody. Whoa. That's murder. Whether you do it or you don't do it, you think about it, you're guilty. The moment I think about it, oh, I wish this guy would just, oh, I just want to kill him. The rapture happens right then and there. Or I die. Either I die or the rapture happens after the moment I think about killing somebody. I have not confessed it. It will stand at the judgment seat of Christ as wood, hay, or stubble. It will burn. I will be at the judgment seat of Christ charged with murder. For thinking about it. I do sin as a Christian. If I confess my sin, God is faithful and just to forgive my sins. That's how important it is. We have that advocate. And you must, you must, you must, if I can say it 400 times, you must teach that child of God, that babe in Christ, you will still sin. But you bring it to God. And you work on that sin. You fight with that sin. There are sins in my life since I got saved. They're gone. I don't even worry about them no more. There's still some sins like they're gone. But you know my mind lavishes in them. There are sins I'm still doing. As a born again Bible believing Christian. Who teaches the Bible. I probably lost people by now. I teach the Bible. I preach the Bible. I witness. I'm a sinner. I need to apply 1 John 1 9. It's that simple. Verse 12 of chapter, uh, chapter 2. I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. So whether you are you just got saved or you are saved and you have confessed the sins and Satan comes up to your ears and he says hey, what about that sin you do? What about it? You sin. You see what you did back then? How about that? And you must about it in prayer say Lord God if you don't know, is that sin under the blood? Now, this is how I treat it. I don't think it's wrong. If I know that sin is under the blood, say that Satan, it's under the blood of Jesus Christ, and the Father forgives it, and the Father cleanses it, it's 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 forgi forgiven and it's cleansed. It's gone. You don't have to bother me about that sin no more. If he comes up to me and says, what? And if he brings up an old sin, old, old sin before I was saved. Or when I was first saved. Or brings back a sin long. Now the day I got saved, I didn't confess every sin. The days after I got saved, I did not confess every sin. So that Satan brings up a sin that I've done. And I'm not sure if it's under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I will pray to the Father something like this. Lord, Satan has brought up this sin in my life. I don't know if it's under the blood. And if it is, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but if it isn't, you know it's there. I plead to the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse me from all sins at this moment. And that sin in particular. It's that simple. We sin before we saved. We will sin after we saved. Death or rapture will end that. 
Okay? And then when we confess our sins to God, 1 John 1, 9, 2, uh, 1 John 2, 12, it is forgotten, it is erased. And the two options I gave you would apply. It's either washing the blood, or if it's not, I'll say, Lord, if I have, forgive me. If I have confessed this, forgive me. But I, I do now, so I'm not sure. 1 John 3, 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because born of God. Okay, they will throw that one. What's that one? I'm saved. I'm a child of God. I am born again. I've got two natures in me right now. I've got the flesh and I've got the spirit. Paul says they wrestle against each other. They hate each other. The flesh hates the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit hates the flesh. But the God in me, the Holy Spirit in me, that I am a child of God, I don't sin. God doesn't sin. I don't sin by the Holy Spirit. But that flesh of me, that old me, the corpse <laughs> that's supposed to be dead, that comes out of the grave and desires and, and has appetite and does wrong and sins. Now that's sin. And the perfect way to explain that, if I were to die right now, not rapture, if I were to die right now, this flesh, this body, will never crave, never desire, never covet, will never sin again in the grave. My soul and spirit will go back to God. That part of me that is God, belongs to God, is God through Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. That part of me that takes off, never sin. The part of me that did sin is in that grave, corrupting, rotting, smelling, stinking, worming, and everything else that happens to a body in a coffin or wherever the body's placed. This stink, stinking, rotten, miserable corpse it is the corpse that's alive right now that sins it does not please God and how do I know that because when I go to heaven finally when I am raptured whether dead or alive the Bible says that I will get a new body then that new body will not ever 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 sin again so when I do sin, after I'm saved, it's this miserable flesh. When I don't sin, and don't want to sin, and fight the sin, that's the Holy Spirit, God in me, saying, let's keep on going, let's do right, let's do righteousness. And that flesh says, no, let's do evil, let's do wicked, let's go do wrong. You know, you got two people in, in you right now. You got the flesh, and you got the spirit. It's your flesh that's trouble with God, not the spirit. And they're both indwelling inside you. Galatians 3.26 So we as Christians, and we dealing with people who just got saved, you're going to sin. You're going to have trials and tribulations. Salvation will not get rid of that cancer. Salvation will not get your family right. Salvation will not grow that arm back. Salvation will not turn the gray hair back to whatever your hair was. Salvation is not going to make you perfect in this world. You know why? The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 is written to Christians. I know we use it for lost people. I know we use it for evangelism. But the wages of sin is death is written to Christians. We die as Christians because we're still sinners. Some of us are going to go up in a rapture when that happens. Glory to God. We're going to get a new body. Glory to God. The reason why a doctor will say, hey, you got this disease, 
because your body's breaking down. Now, the disease is not in the Holy Spirit that dwells with you. Listen, the only way I can put it, doctors come, you go to the doctor, you've got a sexually transmitted disease in your flesh. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that's in you does not have an STD. Your flesh does. Not God. We need to confess our sins. We need to acknowledge we are sinners. But when God sees us in Christ, there's no sin. When God sees us in the flesh, you're a sinner. Galatians 3.26 For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So you've got to have that faith. In Christ Jesus. i got faith in Mary. You're not saved. i got faith in water baptism. You're not saved. I am a child of God by Jesus Christ. As his child, when he sees me in Christ, I see Christ's righteousness. Now, when he sees Stiley Hayward, he sees unrighteousness and trouble and sin. When he sees Jesus in me, righteousness, holiness, perfection. That's what he sees. Romans 8, 15. And they're not going to get this right away. You gotta train them. You gotta help them. Many people, including myself, had someone led me to Lord Jesus Christ and then left me for the wolves. You can't do that. Paul found Timothy. Paul trained Timothy. And Paul had the right to say, Timothy is my son. Now, Timothy biologically was not Paul's son. His father was a Greek. Paul was Jewish. But Paul could say, that's my spiritual son because I raised that man with the help of his mother and his grandmother. I didn't have all part. It's his mother and his grandmother had part. What's God going to say to you? You go out and you tell people about Jesus and they get saved. You go out and tell people about Jesus they get saved. You go out and tell people about Jesus they get saved. Glory to God. But you don't do nothing with them. You grow them and then you leave them alone. Call you a miserable parent. Call you a fatherless parent. You talk about today children that don't have fathers. There are Christian babes, Christian children, Christian young men out there today and in the faith they don't have a father that led them to be born again. All right, you got saved? Good. Move on to the next one. That's a sin. That's a sin not raising up. I tried every way but prison ministry to help those that have gotten saved. Prison ministry, you can't do much. You can't go deal with them every day or every week. And when you do have every week, you got you can only have a full classroom. One on one. Romans 8, 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, capital F. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit and my spirit, they're two different spirits. God is capital, me, I'm small. That we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify together. Tell them about the suffering. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You know? Grow them. Tell them, say, listen, if you're going to live for Christ, you're going to have to count down. You're going to have to sit down as that man will build a tower. you got to say, do I have enough? What's it going to take to build that tower? As that king says, I'm going to go battle another king. I'm going to have to sit down and count the cost. What am I going to do with that newborn babe in Christ? you got to say, listen, right now, you got to think about it. Do you want to be a disciple for Jesus Christ? If you do, you may have to leave your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your home. You may have to give things up. You're saved. 
Wonderful to God. Glory to God. Grow in the Lord. But discipleship is a whole nother thing. First Peter. I mean, yeah. First Peter 2.10. Too many people just, all right, say this prayer, or you're saved, move on. That's wrong. That's wrong. Now, like I said, I mean, you leave gospel tracts out and people get saved by them. I mean, you're restricted. The sower went out and sowed seed, man, he threw that seed everywhere. But we are to train. First Peter two ten, which in time past were not a people, lost, but are now the people of God, saved, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, saved and lost. Saved and lost. There's a difference. And back to with Galatians four six. You got to tell them there's a difference now. What's the difference? You are a new creature. You are now a child of God. You are no longer a child of Satan. As you repented, now you got to pick up and go. And to go is to go in another direction. A way of holiness. A way of righteousness. A way that pleases God with the Holy Spirit. And on that way, you're going to fail. You're going to sin. Galatians 4, 6. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So as children of God, as child of God, when someone gets saved, Express the thing that angels rejoice. The Father has rejoiced. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That is reservations for heaven. Those reservations cannot be canceled, will not be canceled, and cannot be erased out of that book forever. You are a child of God. You now have a new lease on life. You are now a newborn babe in Christ. You've got to grow. You've got a book, a Bible now. You've got an example of Christ and the apostles. You will sin. You still have the same Jesus, the same blood atonement, the same Calvary's cross to confess your sin. And the same God, when you confess your sin, is going to forgive and cleanse you of those sins. And you will sin. And you got to take it respectfully. That you are now property of God and no longer Satan. And if there's any way I can help you to grow, if there's anything I can do, I don't have all the answers, but I will do what I can to grow you. As any parent would do with their children. They will do anything possible to grow those children. That, that concludes. It's a very important step to, do, to witness. It's a respectable step. 20 videos we've, we've gone through in audio th lessons. The who, what, where, when, why, how. What to do, what not to do. How to do it. Examples. And I pray you go back to the videos if you caught one in the middle or at the end. God expects us to preach the gospel. But not everybody is going to get saved. And those that do get saved, it's our responsibility to grow them. Or turn them over to somebody who can grow them. Now, 
I'm in Florida. We have a lot of tourists down here. Let's say I meet somebody for whatever the event is down here. They get saved. All right, fine. Where do you live? I live in Minnesota. Well, I'm not going to go to Minnesota unless God directs me, but I have no cause to go to Minnesota. Now, we can text, we can email, we can do the videos. Let me see if I can find where you live, in the area you live, a good Bible-believing Christian church that has the proper standards. Let me try to get you into that church. You make the phone calls, you make the checking, you check the pastor and all that, and you tell him, say, listen, I got this man, he lives in this place right here, he's received Christ, I'm trying to get him into a good Bible-believing church where he can grow. And then you politely Casually, say, move them on. And then check on them. Say, how are things going? What's going on? How, how are you growing? What are you doing now? Encourage them. You know, just because a child goes off to college, oh, well, okay, they're not much older no more. No, that doesn't happen. But go in all the world and preach the gospel. 